بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah dear viewers welcome to Utawar my name is Isaacuddin I'll be hosting the show tonight and I'm going to introduce to you these amazing guys we have you know we are talking about topic is boxing and youth you know we want to talk about young people and boxing because boxing can help those young people especially when they have a lot of free times and also if they can look after this and regarding their health and other issues so we have GB coach uh, Darren Darren with us, Langston, could you, would you like to introduce yourself to our viewers? Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Darren Lanley, I'm a former England and Great Britain boxer and coach and I'm now currently uh, helping out at Limehouse Boxing Academy. Fantastic, then we have England coach, Mark, would you like to introduce yourself to our viewers? Uh, hello, my, my name's Mark Collins, <coughs> uh, I'm an England uh, boxing coach, also an England uh, boxing coach educator and I'm the co-lead coach at uh, Limehouse Boxing Academy. I've also written uh, several books on boxing, including a book about Muhammad Ali. You met him, haven't you? You met yeah. Muhammad Ali yeah. and the George Foreman and yeah. others. Yeah. Amazing. I yeah. would love to know about this. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you felt. Yeah. Yeah. On my right, we have um, Shah Rahman. He's also a boxing trainer. He also. Would you call yourself a GB coach, or would you call yourself? Um, I, I help out with um, um, help Mark out at England Boxing, um, running some of the camps. Fantastic. Then we have at last. Um, Harvey. Harvey has just become a professional boxer now. Harvey, would you like to tell our viewers how you started and um, about yourself? Yeah, well, my name is Harvey Horn. Um, I'm currently a professional fighter We're under Frank Warren. I was um, a GB fighter for, with GB amateur for three years. I've been all over the world as an amateur. And now um, I'm looking to make my pro debut in October. So. If I could ask you Harvey first, the, the, all of them are trainers and the coaches, and you're only one actually. You are actually de delivering the boxing anyway. What are the difference between you guys? Um, I think the difference is obviously I'm a bit better looking than the others. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, I mean, um, like the likes of Darren, he's been um, he was a GB amateur for ten years, but uh, been all over the world, same as me, but um, had a lot more experience than me. But um, like I say, um, I couldn't be where I am without without um, that sort of experience being passed on to me. So. Yeah, um, yeah. Is it difficult to be a boxer though? Um, it, is, it is very difficult, yes. I it's mean, like a um, routine lifestyle, isn't it? Really yeah, really yeah, that's, that's, what, um, that's a better explanation for it. It's more of a lifestyle. I mean, um, as, a, as a young kid, you, um, you want to go out and meet your friends, you want to party, you want to um, do your own thing. And um, as a boxer, you need to be quite disciplined. You need to be training, training hard all the time. You've got to sacrifice a lot of nights out, a lot of, a lot of your social life, really. So. Um, for a young, for a, a kid of a young age, it is a very hard, uh, it is a hard lifestyle to follow. But if you look at um, like some of the boxers, like I, I look towards some of the um, boxers, such as uh, boxers now, say like Floyd Mayweather, and people that are really big in the game, they've sacrificed their social life. But now they can, they've got plenty of money. They've got, they've, they've got everything that you want as a young kid. So it's um. It's definitely worth it if you can stick at it, but it's a very hard lifestyle, yeah. You know, I just want to thank you guys for making time for us. It's really important to have you guys, and our viewers are really, really excited to hear from you guys. If I could ask, go back to Darren again, you've been around the world. I mean, you've been to a lot of different, different places. you met a lot of young people. Um, I'm sure different people have a different issues. You know, in Tower Hanover, we live, we have lots of different, different issues, and especially in when you have no schools at all for six weeks or seven weeks. Um, if you could share your experience around the globe you've been to. Yeah, you know, I've experienced it as an athlete and as a coach, so I've had quite a lot of good experience. And it's just, you know, when you go to different countries, it's obviously different races, different cultures and different environments. So it's quite nice to see how you're respected in certain parts of the world. It's um, Name two countries you've been to. Uh, oh, most countries in Europe have been to Azerbaijan, Thailand, China, America, Australia. So quite a fair few um, but yeah I think some of the cultural aspects on how adults are treated and not treated well is, is quite a big uh, a big outlook in life and the respect issue within that and also with their peers and their other friends and how they interact. In the UK at the moment we have having a problem with like acid attacks a new thing coming up is really a lot of 
uh, thing happening. Acid attacks, you've got um, stabbing, the knife crime going up, a gun crime going up, and gangs and all this kind of stuff. Do you find this kind of issues in other places of the Europe? I've not obviously experienced it myself or, or witnessed it, so you know, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Um, obviously, it's, it's the acid thing is quite a new sort of craze at the moment, it's, it's not very good, but you know, I think within sport and when I sort of got into boxing it was because uh, I had an older brother, there's quite a big age difference and my mum and dad sort of took me to like a youth club and got into boxing that was mainly to get him off of stopping getting him into trouble and getting him involved in that kind of issues and because he was a lot older than me I kind of looked up to me big, big brother even though you grew up and you think he's a bit of an idiot <laughs> at that age you sort of look up to your older siblings and uh, the main reason he got into that because my mum didn't want to hang around the street corners and I'm not saying that can escalate into that but it, some of the little people he hand round with and even the kids I went to school with did get into a lot of silly and petty crime and if it wasn't for sport I mainly boxing then I could have easily gone down that kind of route because you get bored and you get you, do. you get bored easy especially during some holidays you've got six weeks you're with your friends what do you do for six weeks your mum and dad are at work you're stuck in the house by yourself or you go down the park to meet your friends and it's just a natural thing you're, you're a young adult you're curious in life and you try new things and trying new things is a good thing in some elements and in, in some aspects it's it's quite you could experience the wrong environment and get involved in the wrong environment and the wrong people and but I said it can easily escalate into things you don't really want young kids to do, so. thank you very much if I could ask Mark you recently I could see the um, you got uh, knocked out racism or something. Yeah, you, had a, you had a, a program today yourself, yeah. isn't it? A big one. Yeah. Well. If you could tell us why you've done it. And uh, well, we've done it. One of the main reasons we were doing it is because um, it's boxing is a, a, a fantastically multicultural sport. And, and like all these um, guys here would, would sort of uh, confirm that as well. You know, that uh, um, when, um, when I was a kid and I didn't box on no one near the level of Harvey and, and, and Darren, but it was a club that was full of all kinds of different different people. You know, there were um, Afro-Caribbean kids, there were sort of uh, uh, Pakistani kids, Irish kids, and and that, that at the time it was actually later when I thought maybe I was sort of in my early twenties and I thought of what an amazing thing that was. And then I, I joined the club in the East End and it was exactly the same. So I've been doing it for twenty years, and every single club that I've been to has been been that way, a very much. Um, a place where almost like a neutral ground where people could meet where they would not meet before. For instance, when I met Shah, who I used to coach when he was at the St George's Club, Shah, a lot of Shah's friends there were Irish tra traveller lads. Now I can't think of too many places where you would f find, uh, you know, uh, Bangladeshi lads becoming friends with Irish travel mm -hmm. lads. I just cannot think of another place where they would meet. You know, and on that level, and that that so today the number one thing about it was to show everyone, and to, to, we're going to take it around schools to say our sport is a very special sport, in that we give them this kind of, uh, you know, neutral ground to meet, and at the same time there's another important issue because we, we feel as though there's more um, there's been some issues arising around social media mm. that, that that I've seen that Charles see a lot of people have seen, so it's a way it's it's part educational and it's part promoting our sport. Fantastic. Shah, sure. we're talking about you actually. He trained you. Yes. Did yeah. he train you? That's why he didn't win the same. Did it come to Repton? So um, if I would ask you, um, there are a lot of young people actually, they, don't, they have a lot of time in their hand and actually they end up in doing a lot of stupid things as well. You know, it's true people are end up in gangs and you know, silly, silly things. How come they're not picking up all those sports like boxing or taekwondo or any other sports to I think it's about um, it's about having the right exposure um, because I I came I came into boxing by sort of an accident um, when I was a bit younger and it wasn't something I was looking looking for um, I just happened to see a see a poster in my school and uh, I started inquiring about it and I was quite interested in trying out different sports and I thought I'll try I'll give it a go and I walked into a boxing gym which is quite a uh, difficult thing to do, uh, especially if you're by yourself. Um, I was quite lucky, a lot of my friends wanted to do it, so it was about 10 of us that I walked into the gym, which made me feel a lot more comfortable. So do you feel um, like your friends helped you to choose the boxing, or you think you would choose something else? They, uh, my friends at the time helped me to walk into the gym, I guess, in a way, because they were with me at the time. 
they didn't help me stick to it because I made that decision myself. And you, I think you, you kind of have to. And uh, I'm sure these guys will uh, you know, confirm this. Uh, you have to be dedicated yourself to do it. I don't think anyone can force you to do that. Um, but, but your friend does make matter. They, they do make difference, isn't it? Around of course, yeah. They no, do I think make it's good to, like good to have a support network. Crowd, yeah, um, definitely good to have a support network of your uh, friends or f family members. Um, that's, that's really important. But ultimately, it's, uh, you, know, it's, uh, you, you have to make that decision of and course. kind of uh, be proactive in trying different things out and uh, you know, looking, looking for these opportunities because it's not, it's not going to come it's not going to come to you you have to you know if you're interested in something i think you have to go and find it and that's that's my advice to young people you know i work with a lot of young people in boxing and youth work and that's the advice i give them is if you know if, you, if you're really interested in something um, you you have to do it yourself don't wait for your friends don't wait for anyone else uh, to do it with you because they they might not be interested in that how do we yeah. engage with especially asian community we don't mm. see many young people are coming through boxing and other things or football I'm saying how do we engage with them what can we do to show them that look there is a life here and you're going to have a successful life I think it's kind of similar to similar to the campaign we're running it's all, it's all about educating people it's all about um, showing people the benefits of getting involved in these things getting involved in sport and what kind of a life uh, you know you have being involved in these things. I had very positive experiences uh, and you know talking to these guys I'm sure that they did as well um, where we I got to meet with lots of different people from from all over the world uh, I mean when we when um, when I used to box with Mark one, one night we counted we had like seven something like 17 different nationalities in in one building uh, that's very you don't see that very often in in many other places uh, so these are the things people need to n be aware of, you know, parents as well, and a uh, lot of a lot of people from sort of our Asian cultures are a bit apprehensive about letting their kids go and go into a boxing gym uh, because they think they might get beaten up or or suffer from racism or whatever else they might might be thinking. Actually, it's, it's very different, and that's what we're trying to highlight with this campaign. It's actually very multicultural and it's very tolerant, and you know, everyone everyone gets on. And like Mark said. It's in sort of a level playground where none of that seems to so exist. So, are you a qualified coach now yourself? I, I, I am a I am a level two coach, and uh, um, I've been for a while, and I'm waiting to go into a level three course, um, which is hopefully it's going to be soon when they if start. If you could tell our viewers, what do you mean level three? What does it mean? What happens? Uh, so, know? level one is an is an what's, uh, what they call an assistant co uh, assistant coach. So. Um, uh, you need a level two to be a head coach of a of a club to run to run a club. Uh, and well done, Mark. You're going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what, that's where I am at the moment. And uh, I um, um, mentioned before, I help I help, I help Mark uh, with some of the England camps, and so I'm, I'm still still learning a lot from Darren and Mark, um, and trying to yeah go as far as I can I can go. Uh, as a coach. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Harvey, if I could come to you. I see lots of young people where you get to see the news everywhere. Like they're drunk, they're beating people. You are good. You're sick in when you see young people actually going after old, old people, you know, nicking their money and all that stuff. How do you feel? I mean, you're in a position that you could grab someone and <laughs> you can force him to do um, anything, man. Don't get me wrong, it's not, obviously, um, you do hear a lot of this bad stuff happening, do a lot like the knife crimes or the gangs and things like that, but um, like I, said, I think um, campaigns like like uh, Martin Shah's campaign, that it is getting the, it is about getting the white exposure and it, it will, if it, it does make a difference, it's made a difference with a lot of boys and um, they've been doing some great work with it. But um, I think um, you don't really hear too much about the good that happens. I mean, you, do hear, you do hear a lot about, um, when something bad happens, because it's a young person, all of a sudden it's um, they normally assume oh, that it's young. It's, um, there's a lot of uh, they jump to conclusions quite quickly, and because um, the same things happen with adults as well, they get involved in petty crime. They they get involved in a lot, but as a young person, maybe they're targeted more. It gets put in the in a bad light a bit more. Not to say they're right, but. Um, I think that a lot of good is happening as well. There is a lot changing. There's a lot of campaigns going on, and it is getting exposed. We're, we're getting more exposure. So, like, like the boxing, for example, 
Mark was saying, um, having that many different nationalities under one roof, you don't really find a lot of sports like it. I mean, you get people from good backgrounds, from not so well-off backgrounds, from, like I said, I've been on the Great Britain squad, for example. Um, you have Joshua Boatsy, just won Olympic bronze of Ghanaian descent. You've got me, I'm just, um, just a working class boy from Essex. Um, you have a lot of Irish travellers involved, and like I say, it's not very rare you get a sport that gets people that in that that diverse group together. And But do you feel like we, as a, I'm a parent, so do you think we understand the young people's need, or um, we're just looking down and saying, "Look, you're bad, man. What's going on?" <laughs> I think um, a lot of parents think that they understand the need, don't they? They uh, like they say they remind us all the time. They was young ones. Uh, no. So give me an example. Uh, Wh where do you think we're making mistakes? What um, do we think we don't understand? I don't think necessarily. Uh, Like um, it, they say, they were young once, so they do understand. Your parents can tell you can tell you what to do from like from when you're born to all, all the way through. They can tell you what to do all the time. And as a young kid, it's up to you whether you want to take that information in and, and act on it. And as a young kid, you don't really know know better. Really, you have to make your own mistakes. You have to learn. You have to learn. Uh, you have to go through life yourself. It's you can't just go on what what people are telling you all the time. Don't get me wrong. If we were to listen to listen to our parents, they've been through it, so we would we'd probably be in a lot less trouble. But you need to, part of life is making them mistakes and evolving as a person. So um, I don't think you can really target the parents as as much as because it is it is down to you to make your own mistakes. But yeah. But do you think we should take their their advice? Where they ex they've been through the experience. I mean, they do have a lot of experience. A lot of young people, you will think, they will think they know more. So probably they don't know how to use the mobile, or they don't know how to use the phone now, the smartphones, yeah. parents, some of them, like me. But he might think he knows the world, but he doesn't know. He maybe just knows how to use the phone, but he doesn't have the experience of the world, does he? Of course, yeah, no, I completely understand. So how do we balance that? Okay, parents need to learn, of course, but the young people have to respect their parents. Because yeah, of course, so, uh, you've always got to respect your elders, I mean, especially your parents. But, um, but like I said, um, if, you was, if the young people was to maybe listen to, listen to the adults that have got more experience, maybe there would um, there'd be a lot less of this stuff going on now. But it works, it works both ways. I mean, like you say, with the parents with the smartphone, the world is constantly changing. So, for an adult to believe that what they experience young is always going to be, it's always going to be like that, um, they would be wrong because the world is constantly changing. So, Shai, if I could come to you again, sorry, because you guys are young, I'm quite interested in now. Do you think, really, do you think that we misunderstand our parents because they keep saying do this, do that all the time? Do you think we misunderstand them or we don't? I think. Um as how Harvey was saying, like things things are constantly changing, and uh, some some of the times I think parents, uh, uh, from from sort of my experience from our culture, don't understand or don't uh, sort of evolve. Because you know the culture, then. you also grown up in Bangladesh yourself, so you I know did, the yeah. both side of it. Yes. So um, you got the pretty balanced idea. Uh, yeah, or improve unbalanced. Improve on. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. um, but I think, uh, yeah, I think a lot of p p people from from our sort of older generation are not not very open to things and uh, not taking an, an active interest to understand the the culture that is uh, here. Uh, you know, growing up growing up in this country, so they might have sort of different mentalities. Um, uh, you know how they grew up in maybe in Bangladesh or in some other country and they've still got that sort of mentality and uh, you know it might be a bit restrictive to some of the young people and that's the, the, the again that's what I men mentioned about um, educating educating people not just young people parents as well about different opportunities that are available and letting letting kids uh, and, uh, just like Harvey said letting them sometimes Makes make some of the mistakes, mistakes yeah, of and, course, uh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, experience different things than than they did. I think they just want to keep it contained in terms of the the experiences they have. Uh, but there's so much so much more out there, which maybe they didn't have access to at the time or the place, um, which the these young young kids have now. So I think it's letting them have that experience, and that's what that's what we tr we try and do as part of the boxing club as well. No, open it, open young people, or open them up to the the world of opportunities, and letting them make make their mistakes and letting them make make their uh, choices uh, in terms of where they take their life. Uh, okay, we're going to go for a small break. 
after the break, we will talk about some um, solutions and about the opportunity for young people. And, you know, is the boxing is the solution for lots of things that are happening around us. It could be one of the solutions. And we can, if you can identify the solutions for our young people, mm -hmm. inshallah, hopefully they will benefit from this. Dear brothers and sisters, stay with us. We're going for a small break and stay with us. Don't go too far. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Dear viewers, welcome back. If you want to call in, we have a number there. You could call in and share your views too. We were talking about boxing, you know, how, how it matters to people's lives, especially young people. There are a lot of issues with the young people, actually. They have a lot of time in their hand and they probably end up in somewhere they're not supposed to. So please call in. You can share your views and tell us what to do too. You can share your experience or if you failed or if you want to become a boxer. Or if you have trouble at home with the kids, get them busy in the boxing club or somewhere else. If I could go back to um, Darren. Darren, you know, in boxing, we, we think it's one of the solutions, not all the solutions, one of the solutions for young people to go and probably learn something, how the attitude, that other stuff comes into it. If you would explain boxing as a comprehensive way, what, how would it be, how would it look like? I don't know, like, for me, like, when I, when I did boxing, like, and not necessarily boxing, but I think everyone needs to find, like, a purpose in, in their life to sort of, kids get bored, young adults get bored, adults get bored, you know, so it's finding a structure and something that you enjoy. And for me, it was sport, I loved football and I loved boxing, so if I wasn't playing football, I'd boxing, if I wasn't boxing, I'd be playing football, so that sort of kept me mum and dad happy because I wasn't handing around the street corners with uh, some of my mates in school that used to get in quite a lot of trouble so they was quite pleased with that and obviously I started in I enjoyed it which is the main thing and anything you do in life you have to enjoy it but then I started finding that I've got a real passion for it and I started uh, getting better at it. Um, at the same time I was quite of an energetic kid and was in a little bit of trouble and stuff at school and various other bits and pieces but saying that I was actually quite a shy kid so my natural reaction would be to lash out if I didn't understand something and I'd always get into trouble and uh, through, through boxing it gave me not just enjoyment and a bit of fitness and kept me healthy, it gave me a lot of discipline in life and taught me a lot of respect. So I think whatever you do in life, you've got to have When you say discipline, kind of what does that mean if you could break it down for us? Discipline is sort of, it's kind of... It does come with maturity, you know, as you get older and you get, you get wiser and you kind of see the life a bit, uh, the world a bit different. Uh, discipline for me is like having a bit of a structure and knowing your surroundings, knowing where you are. There's different things you can do in different places. There's, there's nothing wrong with having a laugh and a joke with your friends, but when you're doing it with someone else's talking, for me that's that's quite rude and disrespectful so i would say that's kind of a disciplined thing being able to hold yourself together and not say something over someone and laugh over someone who's maybe a bit uh more unfortunate than yourself so i think that comes under discipline i know when to hold yourself back from doing something even though you really want to do it it's just holding yourself back and regrouping so you've trained lots of young people actually so Tell me some about some of the stories that are successful stories about their lives. What you looked into them, what you how you how they changed their lives as well. If you could pinpoint. Uh, yeah, before when I sort of uh, quit boxing, I sort of uh, became an athlete mentor for Sky Sports, Living for Sport, and um, used to go around various schools and I'd work with a right range of kids from gifted to talented that needed that extra push and incentive to kids that actually were very disengaged in school life, didn't have very good home home lives and. Um, you used to get some right challenging kids and there was one kid that actually went to a school in Kent and uh, his name was Jack Ball and he didn't have a very good home life, uh, was really negative, didn't really engage with any other kids and from doing two or three visits at school uh, I heard he was, he was getting a lot better in his school work, he was engaging in, in the P side of stuff and to further that, two years later myself and uh, Mark work at a, a school where he runs an MVQ course for boxing and this kid actually came to the college and right. I was really shocked, I was like that name rings a bell but I couldn't quite remember and then he turned up and I saw him and he was the complete opposite from the timid shy kid that wouldn't speak to anyone and engage with anyone to 
actually being very, very outgoing, actually starting off warm-ups and, and really sort of helping lead sessions in, in the gym. So that, from my point of view, it looks like I've done a good job, but also it also shows the power of sport and boxing in general, that it can have a massive impact and change people's lives. Mark, you, you do the educational stuff, isn't it? With more of a training, mm -hmm. also write lots of books on it. If you could show, tell us about your books and um, why do people, are they mistaken that think boxing is about punching and putting someone on the floor and blood and all that stuff? You know, something comes into your head straight away. I mean, mo most of what we do is v not, only a small percentage actually get into the ring to, con to, to enter into a contest. I mean, out of the, say, 25 regulars we have at our gym, uh, we um, only only half of them would would can compete, you know. So myself and Shah and Darren and Harvey are all the same. Every club we've been involved in, a great majority of those, the the, the emphasis is not particularly on the on the actual contest. It's more about the fact that it gives, them, as Darren mentioned, gives them a structure, gives them a place where they can uh, meet other people, gives them confidence, uh, gets them maybe eating better, uh, get, get, obviously gets them fitter. Uh, so there are, there are many different aspects of boxing other than just punching that other person in the face. And in fact, that, that, that's the bit at the end that really to us, it's almost kind of like, if we get a good boxer, it's kind of, well, well, that's a bonus. What, what we, uh, certainly I get a kick out of is when, when um, as the boy uh, that Darren mentioned, you know, when you, you have kids who you just, you clearly get them in, out of themselves by, join, by joining in. You know, and uh, and I, I've spoken to uh, I remember speaking to a very famous trainer called Brendan Ingle, who, who so it sounds uh, more like you're like a priest, man. You're just actually looking after uh, someone so well. Well, it, well, it, uh, as a, Brendan Ingle, who who is, is probably had more world champions than any other uh, British coach. He's based up in Sheffield, and he, he had Nassim Hamed. Yeah. Uh, he's recently had Kel Brook. He's had a whole host of like world champions, British champions. I remember going to his gym maybe ten years ago, and he said when I walked through the door and, he, and he's, he, he's, his gym is like, he's like in a church hall. It's not, it's the opposite of fancy, you know, I mean, there's not, it's just real downbeat gym. He's got lines across the floor where he teaches them a particular way of boxing, where as soon as they get into the gym, they will get on the lines and they will box off, he will get them to box off either foot, so they can either box southpaw or orthodox, despite whether they're southpaw or orthodox to begin with. So he has his own take on boxing. But when he spoke to me, he said, Boxing, contesting is fourth on the list for him. He said, number one, I want them to feel as though they belong. He said, because a lot of these kids from this area, they, they come from very poor backgrounds. He said, number two, I want to give them, uh, obviously, some confidence and self-worth to make, feel good about themselves. Number three, I want to teach them uh, good uh, manners and the way of, of behaving. And he said, if, number four is boxing out of that. Wow. And, that and that's the guy who, who was trained what, four or five world champions? Some of the, some of the most successful champions we've had in, in 30 years. And that came from him. And, uh, and, and that always stuck in my mind, actually. And I actually said, said, mentioned that to Shara a few years back. And really, that's the approach we, we try and take yeah. at our club. And, and, uh, yeah. So your books you write about, is it about boxing or something else? Well, I mean, I've, I've, ri I've written a couple of um, books on, on boxing. And, and particularly um, when I, I spent some time writing about Muhammad Ali. I was actually working on a TV program about him, and then I wrote a little book. And then, but I met him. I had two days with him, and and he, the thing that came across with everyone that I met, who had met Ali or been around him, was the fact that almost like his boxing was secondary to what uh, he, the the other part of his personality that he had, that inspirational part of him that actually was made by boxing. But what made him great was that, that he had so much more to offer, mm. just than punching someone in the face you know I mean he wouldn't be Ali if he hadn't if he didn't have that and, uh, and you know so that that was what came very much came through during that that time when I was when I was doing um, you know writing and being around people like that but so yeah it's it, there's a lot of different levels to what we try and do and what not just us but every, every good boxing club up and down the country Brilliant. Sure, it's more like a school, isn't it? It's more like a school, like you educating people and at the same time also you're training them. Yeah, it is, mo most definitely. I think this is a, a place where So within your uh, um, academy, mm. what do you guys do? 
Um, yeah, uh, it, it is like a school. Basically. It's more, more, more than just a school. It's teaching about the, some of the things that they don't perhaps learn in schools. The uh, the discipline, uh, well, they do, but you know, this is where it's really instilled in them. Uh, as Darren mentioned, it's, it's about having having that discipline to to do things, but also to withhold. Uh, from it's doing, more practical, doing certain, isn't it? Doing certain Discipline things. here is more practical, yeah. and he chooses yeah, yeah, to yeah. do it as well. That's, that's, that's right. Yeah. You choose to do and, uh, it. And uh, uh, you know, th those those three other things that Mark mentioned before the boxing comes in, those are really important things as well, which I and I didn't didn't really realise when I was boxing, um, but uh, on reflection, many years later, I actually thought, you know, what Mark said is uh, is right. And that's what we should be focusing on, not just not just boxing. It's actually building people, uh, you know, having a holistic approach, and not just focusing on the boxing. Because to 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 actually develop a good boxer, you need all these other things. You need the discipline, and you need, you need the mental toughness and resilience, and all those things. And that's what we try and build. Um, and alongside alongside the boxing, we do other things to prepare them for the real world. Uh, so you know. what would you do if someone comes into your boxing and he's really at it so bad, he's sweating all the time, mm. he's doing the F-word all the time, and he doesn't care, he thinks he's best, what would you do to him? Well, one of the things, we don't, we don't do that, um, we, you know, it's very rare uh, that that happens in the gym, um, and uh, everyone, everyone's kind of like that, and that's what, the, that's what Mark was saying about the level playing field, uh, you know, so when people are in those sorts of uh, situations or surroundings they feel more comfortable doing that so it's a very uncomfortable thing to do when there's no one else kind mm. of swearing no one else is angry uh, so for someone to come in and kind of tip that balance it's, it's a bit uncomfortable thing for them to do but we still yes you, you you might still get those who are quite angry and you know they, they, they use profanity um, and, and we need to work with them to kind of understand themselves and try and uh, get them to be disciplined in not doing some of the things that they do. And uh, we've had many, many cases of that where young people were getting themselves in trouble, uh, you know, with the police and uh, causing antisocial behaviour and so on. Uh, but it takes, takes a bit of time to kind of get that change in people. Uh, but I think it's the right surrounding to be able to do that. And uh, you know, being angry and uh, being angry and swearing—it's one of the things that we teach people. It doesn't really work, especially you know, in, in boxing. Um, from from my experience, if you if you if you get angry uh, in the ring, more often than not, I think you you lose because it's very difficult to think uh, clearly when you're angry. And so that, that those are the kind of things we try and teach people. You know, have a clear head. Um, you know, think about what you're doing before um, before you start swearing or before you start you know, f start a fight. Actually, think about what you're doing and what what it's going to lead to, and hopefully that you know helps people in their lives outside of the gym as well. Uh, if I could come to you, so I'll just ask: well, How did you get involved with boxing? If you could um, tell us your journey up to now. Um, I got started where my dad uh, boxed um, when he was younger. It didn't go very far, just um, went to, had a few contests as an amateur. And um, he took me to the gym at 10 years old. I'd been doing like karate, swimming. I was always involved in sport. And um, he took me as a 10 year old. You can only start actually competing at 11. So um, he took me down the gym at 10 and it is a really daunting place, a boxing gym. I mean, um, you first walk in there, a, a lot of um, people would tell you they, they normally have certain things that that trigger trigger their memories off as um, like when you first walk into it. Mine was the smell of it. You smell like the the sweaty gloves or the bags, and um, it always sticks with you. And um, that's what always stuck with me. I went in as a ten year old, and um, you say about the kids walking in there with a lot of attitude or that. It like I say it's quite rare. I was the opposite. I walked in there because it is a daunting place and it's a sport where. Obviously, people do. You are out there to hit the other person. They're going to hit you, so it's slightly scarier maybe than, like, say, swimming, or because there's a possibility of getting getting punched in the face. But um, so it is quite daunting, and um, it is very, it's quite humbling in a way because you know that um, if you if you're not prepared, pro well, well, 
as a 10 year old uh, I was more I just wanted to get in and get stuck in how about the people around you your friends how did they take you um, they take you as my, they wow yeah, well that's what I went in there on, on my own so I was in there I didn't know anyone didn't know any of the coaches but um, a good coach would take you in they teach you and a big thing um, like with the campaigns and with the gyms there's a very uh, good camaraderie about it everyone looks out for everyone whether like I was 10 and one of my first friends in there was uh, Big Luke, his name was. He was about 22, 23. It's a big age gap, so th there is a big age gap in the gym. And um, yeah, like you say, they take you under their wing, they look after you because there's a lot of respect in the sport and in the gyms. And um, like I say, I, I was training for a couple of months, uh, turned 11, had my first contest at 11. I got beat front, I lost my first three contests, I mean, like, but then um, just stuck at it, carried on cracking away, and um, eventually... But did you feel when you lost three times in a row, did you feel you're not good enough? Did well, you ever... I, was I, mean, I don't know how you picked yourself up, yeah, it's important to know. My dad sat me down after the third loss, and he said to me, oh, if, you, if you don't want to do this again, I completely understand. Uh, if I can understand, because um, I felt that a couple of the contests I maybe should have won, because boxing is a lot about who, who you think won and who... It's a lot, um, maybe politics, I suppose. But um, I, I had lost my third fight, and as a young kid, it's very demoralising. It's like you're training very hard. There's a lot, a lot goes on behind closed doors in the gyms that you don't see. You just see the end result. You just see the the three minute, ra the three three minute rounds, and that's it. And um, I was very, uh, very down on myself. It took a couple of months out, and I said, No, you know what? I'll, I I want to get back in. I want to, I want to give it. A go. I'm not going to go out and I lost. And um, I think I went about four years unbeaten after that. I just carried, just um, found, found so my. So what rhythm, changed? Yeah. You become very successful. What changed it within um, within that? I think I was rewarded for my persist persistence. I think because um, I was tra I w was training hard for the three fights that I lost, but maybe they motivated me that little bit more because I've been beaten. No, I'm not getting beat again. I'm going to go out and I'm going to win and I'm going to make something. I, I enjoy it and I, I feel like I'm good at it. I'm going to make something of myself. So maybe I was rewarded for my persistence, I think. Who was the best fighter you beat then? The best fighter I beat? Um, most recently, um, I'd, I went to Miami in January 2016, so the year of the Olympics. The Olympics was six months down the road. And um, I boxed an American in his backyard in Miami. And um, he went on to win the Olympic bronze. So wow. he, was, he was quite, um, he was a good kid and I, I beat him on home soil, which is quite, quite a hard thing to do. And um, that was a very good win for me. Um, as an amateur, I've beat a few fighters with undefeated records. And um, yeah, that felt good. Seeing as I never had an undefeated record myself, it was always um, always good to beat someone that's, that's undefeated. So, so what other countries have you been to? Yeah. I've been to, um, I went to Brazil for the Olympic training camp. So I was helping out the, um, the Great Britain it. squad. So, it, which was quite hard if I'm honest, because um, I was there, I felt like I should have been there, so, but I was helping out the boy that was in my place sort of thing, so it was quite, but again, because a no, maybe a young kid might have gone, or someone not as disciplined, might have gone, nah, I'm, I'm not going to go, I'm, I'm going to take it, take it like a sore loser, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to help him out, and I'm just going to wipe my mouth, but um, the, the boxing has taught me to take, take losses on the chin, take losses and keep powering forward, so I went and I thought I'd turn a negative into a positive go to Brazil, I'll experience it, and I'll help him out, and good luck to him, so, yeah. If you find someone, that there's, there's a fight probably somewhere, what would you do, would you take it, would you take a part, or would you try to sort them out, what would oh, you do? Um, for or are I you just going to walk away, you're not into that what, on the street, it's a yeah, fight on the street, yeah. um, I, I would, it's not nice to watch, I mean, um, I, in the ring it's completely different, it's controlled, it's, it's called the sweet science for a reason, it is, a, it is um, it's a science. It's hit and not be hit. It's not just going to and knock the other one out. It's not hooking it harder. It's a, it's a science. And um, on the street, it's it's not. Um, there's no place for it there. there. There's a place for it in the ring. There's a, there's a sport for it. And even if you wanted to go for a more brutal, uh, or maybe a more involved sport, more viol not violent sport, but you know, maybe go for UFC or MMA. But on the street, there's no place for it, and it, people can get seriously, seriously hurt. And like I said, I would do my best to get involved and stop it if I could. Providing my, my own health wasn't a risk. <laughs> I want to come to you with your dreams. I want to see how far you want to go. I'm going to ask you about dream. Think about it. If I could go to Mark again. You wrote a book on uh, Muhammad Ali. Um, people are, a lot of people are watching actually. They idolize him and he really yeah. respect him. So what did you write about? I would like to know because 
you stayed with him, and, and mm. it's, it's amazing to know your input. Well, we, it, it, was, it, was, um, it was a television series that was on ITV, well, a television show, and it was called Muhammad Ali Through the Eyes of the World. So the, the whole thing was about, it was in 2000 when I met, when I met him. So at that time, he just turned 60. So he was still, in, he, he had the Parkinson's syndrome, but he was still looked like Muhammad Ali. You know, I mean, he still looked, had that physicality. So this documentary, which then turned into a book, was uh, about a celebration of his life by the people who knew him best. And the, and the people uh, who knew him best were obviously the people in, involved in boxing, but also there was quite a lot of celebrity people and there was even Bill Clinton and uh, uh, some po big politicians who, who, who got involved in it, who wanted to say, pay their sort of respects to him. So that, that was the sort of basis of what, what, what it was all about. And I was sort of there to, as a consultant, because at the time I sort of was a bit of an expert on the, the history. And because as much as anything, I've always been a fan of boxing. You know, like since the age of like about, nine, ten years old, I, I've been a, a huge fan of boxing and um, that was the, the basis of the programme and then uh, so I met him in Louisville, Kentucky in February 2000 and it was an amazing experience, you know, because even then, even though he wasn't very well, he still, like I say, he still had that physicality and he had that playfulness, he did a magic trick for us. Uh, the first thing he did actually when I saw him in, in the Sealback Hotel in Louisville was like he started throwing some jabs at us and stuff like that. And, uh, He's a very humble person, isn't he? He's really... Uh, he, 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 he was what came across more than anything was how he was dealing with his illness and how the fact that he had this illness that had slowed, not just slowed him down, but obviously what he was noted for was his voice and it, it, it had stripped him of his voice. But he was still flying all over the world and putting himself in front of an audience in almost to say like I don't care you know I'm still gonna do what I what I, what I need to do and and he, at no point would did it come across that you know all the way through his life even until he died that he, he was that he was feeling sorry for himself every single day was a positive day you yeah. know and uh, and that that was in, incredible and I think that's why what made him such a unique uh, uh, character you know and I feel, I feel very fortunate to have, uh, to have made no, he's amazing. I think whatever he stand for, he actually stuck stu there. He doesn't care what's going to happen to him. He believed something, and he was he was there to he, show the world. Look, he's a man of principle, amazing. ultimately, you know. And and we sort of live in a world now, and all the lads have been talking about it, about the things that make a, car a, a good boxer. He, his his trainer, Angelo Dundee, who we met, and and I said, what what do you look for when you see a boxer in the gym? And he just said, I look for their character. You know, and, and he said you can, anybody can hit a bag, anyone can look good on a particular day inspiring or, or, or on the pads, but he would look over a period of time of what that person sort of had inside really and, and that's what makes all the, the great champions ultimately, it's, it's what, what they've got inside, a bit like when Harvey just mentioned the way he reacted to saying that he's not going to the Olympics, he reacted in a very to what would be a devastating situation to most young sportsmen and women, he reacted to it in a, with it that showed a lot of character. Amazing. Darren, if I come to you, say, if I want to ask you, um, what do you look for when you choose, or when you choose a boxer to become a successful one? What do you look for when you train them? What am I looking for in yeah. terms of what attributes? Individual or person, what do you look for? I think it's the same sort of thing that Shah and Marcus said really, but when we, in, in any boxing club in the country, you know, it's not necessarily looking for a world champion, it'd be nice if we produced world champions, but it's actually, for me, boxing, as I personally think it's made me who I am today, like I said, as I've grown up, it's the places I've gone and the people I've met. But it, it is also a danger as well, like, a person can learn boxing and go out and fight. They can, can do, but I think there. it's it's quite. Or well, it might damage his brain. You don't don't know. So what? How do we tackle that? Yeah, look, I've, look things like that are really really rare, if, and it has more pluses than downsides. And you know, you, I could damage my brain by tripping over on that step over there and, and knocking my head. You know, it's you look at footballers when people played football in the fifties and sixties because of the, the how the balls were made of and how big they were and where the water top yeah. the left top of the water. So. You can look at any kind of sports and say it's dangerous. Everything can have a danger. It's the danger of me crossing the road. It's, it's, it's just how people perceive that sport because, yes, let's be honest, you are actually trying to hit someone, so it's perceived in a more dangerous way. But like Harvey has said, it is a skill. 
you have a referee, so you know it to stop someone seriously getting hurt. You know they're they're there for a reason. Um, in terms of what I'm looking for, like Mark said and, and the other guys have said, it is the character. You know, you're not always going to produce a world champion, but are you going to benefit that person's life? Can they change something in their life for the better? And I'm a big believer in instances in myself or people I've met where you've seen people that have come from hard times and by doing the boxing or maybe fairy sports, it's actually given them a, a lift in life, it's given them a structure, it's given them a purpose, it's given them a positive impact on their life. Is there any number, like people start boxing and they end up doing something else? I think the biggest, the biggest age group I've noticed from when I box myself or from when coach, uh, coaching is sort of around the sort of 16 to 19 age because it's a bit different now. Kids have to stay in school to education until they're 18. When I was at school, you, you could leave at 16, and I was on a building site within a week or two from leaving school. And that's the hardest thing because you become into you come into a man's world or an adult's world, and things change. You know, you have bills. You you can do adult things. You can go out clubbing, you can go out drinking, and various other things. And that's a hard thing because boxing and um, not just boxing, but things like you have to be disciplined to get anything in life. And it's quite easy to think, oh, I'll go and have a few beers and go out and meet a few girls and, and do things. It's quite easy to boxing do also that. known for you money, do tend to lose, You tend to lose kids because it's easy. It's an easy life, isn't it? It's easier, it's easier to go and have a party and meet uh, hot girls or boys and have a few beers than it is to go for a five-mile run in the rain and cold yeah. and having to get up at silly o'clock in the morning to, to do your exercises or choose a... a chicken salad over a cheeseburger so you know all these sort of things you know as you get older it comes harder because your friends are doing like i think harvey's mentioned before your yeah. friends all your friends are doing it. even probably your family are doing it i've i remember when i was boxing like people my family were having chips and various other things and it's like i really want that <laughs> but if you make a choice and that's like anything in life and it's not just within boxing or sport you you know, I believe sport and boxing have given me the purpose and the discipline and the structure in life to be successful. I'm going to come to you after the break. We're going to go a small break and we we'll talk about the money in boxing. Oh what do you think? This will excite a lot of people. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, stay with us. We're going for a small break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah, dear viewers, welcome. Uh, we're just going to go straight back to our boxes again. We're not talking about money now. Darren, uh, we stopped with you, I will start with you again. Yeah. You know, boxing is known for a lot of money, you know, loads of millions and millions of money. So, how does that work? Is that a, a dream to be come true, or do you think it's one in a million? I think every uh, young child has a dream of being rich and successful and being famous in life. Um, but the reality is there's hundreds of thousands of boxers around the world and you could probably name around 20 of them that are actually multi-millionaires. That's, that's the reality of it. What most people only see are the ones that are those multi-millionaires. So the reality is it's, there's hundreds of thousands of boxers that are very successful and are champions in their own right, but maybe don't get the, the money um, success as, as others. So if, if someone was to become a pro, yeah. professional, how would they live their life? They don't have some kind of money, or do they have to have another job to live their life? Like I said, it all depends on the boxers. Like I said, you could probably name 20 odd boxers that are multi millionaires, and there's hundreds of thousands that aren't. There's a lot of boxers that also have part time or full time mm. jobs, as well as being a professional boxer. I stayed uh, amateur and I uh, competed at an elite level, and I did get funding for that, and I also had a full time job for half of that time. And, the main reason I didn't go pro was I was a light flyweight. There wasn't the lures of or the multi-million pound purses like the heavyweights get. And I had quite a good job as a postman at the time. I was getting funded to stay amateur, so I was getting a little bit of money. If you're, elite, if you're an elite amateur, you get a bit of money. Uh, you're the only ones that do. If you box for England and Great Britain, you get, you get some money. Uh, the rest of the amateurs don't wear a pro. No matter how good or bad you are, you'll always get paid. That's the difference there. But do you think the government should fund them more? Because if you want to become a successful, you need to put your, all your time, not thinking about another job. Mm. You know, uh, otherwise, you're too half, isn't it? Half here, half there. You're never going to do anything. You're 100% you're, you're right. And I think if you look at our statistic-wise uh, and our success over the last sort of, sort of since 2000, really, is from a, an amateur's point of view for Great Britain, 
your funding's based on your success. So if you was to win no medals, your fund's going to get cut. If you win a medal, your fund will go up, it'll go up, it'll go up. So success breeds success. And if you look at our funding and the success we've had since Sydney 2000 Olympics, we've just grown from here to there. And we're now one of the leading countries in the world within amateur boxing. And I do think money has played a huge part in that. Harvey, do you struggle? I mean, um, do you have a second job? Um, no, as, a, as an amateur, I was, um, like you say, it's success based. So um, I, in 2015, I'm, I'd been on the squad for just over a year and um, I won a European silver medal, senior European silver medal, which was um, that qualified me for one of the top levels of funding. So um, I was okay, I was always doing, I'd always had the funding there, I didn't have to get a second job. And um, I think that was a big part of why I carried on being successful after that. The year after that, I won, went to the European under 22s and I won gold. So I think, um, like I said, it was, um, it's different reasons to be motivated as well. I mean, um, some people want to be the number one and that's their main, like, their main source of motivation. But um, I would be lying if I said that the extrinsic rewards didn't tempt me as well, like the money or the fame. And um, like I said, I won, I won that medal, saw the rewards, and then I wanted more of it, trained harder to it, and then eventually got, got a gold in a different one. But um, yeah. No. But imagine people who are just below you, nearly there, and they've got nothing. Yeah, I've seen it myself. You know, I mean, we're spending millions of outside that sport. Look, people are selling drugs and this and that and that. Yeah. You guys are safe. You guys are um, example to others. And we are actually putting you down in the same time. Get another job, man. And if you can do it, it's up to you. Yeah, like I said, I've, said, I've seen it myself. A lot, of, um, a lot of professional boxers do have second jobs. Well, they're, they're full-time jobs. And um, I'm a big believer of if you want to get something out, you want to be the, the top 1%, the elite in that sport, you need to give 100% to it. If your mind is elsewhere or you're worried about bills or you're worried about how am I going to pay, how am I going to pay for this, how am I going to afford that training kit, how am I going to... Have I got the time to train? Um, you're not going to be. Able, you might be able to give seventy percent or eighty percent, mm. but to be that elite level, you need to give a hundred percent. I'm a big believer of that. So. Mark, what do you think? It, it makes sense, isn't it? I you know. need to be fully there. You need to have. I to really totally agree. That that's why professional boxing is so so difficult. You know because um, Harvey just hit the nail on the head. He says your mind has to be clear. So the last thing your mind is is clear if you if you've got uh, if you're worrying about where the mortgage is coming from or you're worrying about where the rent's coming from or, or, or all those things that are involved in that so he's exactly right you know to and that's why going back to Darren as well to say why there's such a small percentage who, who make the big money in the professional game the great majority as in life are scra scratching yeah. around you know and uh, and it's uh, that that's the nature of, uh, of most the professions isn't it you know but obviously in boxing it's it's a bit more extreme because you're getting punched to still scratch around you know yeah. and uh, Harvey has got um, a great um, you know head on him and, and, and has the opportunity I think to really progress in the game but there's others who are as enthusiastic as Harvey but not quite as maybe switched, switched on you know to what the realities of, of the game you know probably one of the things that's Probably one of the um, negative that people are probably don't want to get involved. There's no life uh, there. I, I, mean, I, I have to have this and that, and it also people look down on you because you've got nothing. They got flashy cars, and people are selling drugs, and people are actually promoting England or yeah. other other nationality. I think I nothing. I you I don't win. You you go. I think there's a distinction, obviously, between obviously the the amateurs that we're all, all involved in. Although Harvey's turning pro, where you know. Um, most of the positives there are like obviously everything we've talked about in terms of the discipline and being a part of a, 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 a club where you make friends and all that. The professional game obviously is, is where it goes up that notch where it's, um, it, it's, it's fairly kind of ruthless in some respects and uh, yeah it's, it's really it's the it's more the entertainment business you know and, and, um, and if you're going to uh, get lots of people to watch Sky or buy into Sky TV, you know, you've got it suddenly goes up uh, several notches yeah. in terms of what you've got to give and what you've got to offer. But Harvey's exactly right, you've got to give it absolutely everything because there's no guarantees, even if you give it ev everything, you know. So if you're 60 70 percent, you're already uh, at a po possible disadvantage, you know. 
Shark, can I come to you regarding um, the campaign you do? Um, the the KO racism campaign. Um, yes. Yeah, so we mentioned it. We mentioned it earlier. Uh, it's a campaign we started at Lime House Boxing Academy, and <coughs> it is to educate uh, educate people about um, different. different what do you cultures. feel is needed? Well, one of the things we were seeing is, uh, is that not right. Yeah, well, one of the things we we noticed was a rise in the social media of people uh, putting very negative um, opi opinions across uh, about other groups of people, and uh, it was coming from coming from all. It's not it's not just uh, one sided. It was coming from ev sort of everywhere, and it's a, it's a problem in a in our in our sport because it's a very multicultural sport, and we our, our club is very multicultural as we mentioned before we have people from all over the world and uh, we thought it wasn't it wasn't a nice nice thing that's uh, happening you know people should be more accepting uh, and so we wanted to wanted to do this to educate people um, not just young not just young people but people that we have access to and are involved in uh, in the sport of boxing um, but us using boxing as a tool to do that um, because that engages a lot of people and captures uh, captures a lot of people's imaginations. So um, we've we've been working with uh, with England Boxing, who are um, supporting the supporting our campaign, and we had a, we had our launch today um, we, outside uh, outside one of the youth centres in um, in Tower Hamlets uh, Spotlight. So we were there for about five hours, and we had visits from um, various members, uh, public figures. We had uh, we had a couple of councillors who came down. Uh, we had the deputy mayor of London, um, who also came down to show his support. Uh, we had a director from England Boxing who was there all day, showing his support for this campaign, which we we're hoping to take take uh, to a national national stage. Um, and get How about the young people? How is their reaction? So uh, I think what, what were we they involved? Today? What, uh, young people are definitely the, the, at the heart of this because we want them to be the advocates for what we're trying to what we're trying to do here in you know uh, and uh, build a build a multicultural society and build a more tolerant society and uh, get them to you know they they the they're the future leaders of our of our country. So we want to get them. Get them to lead this and get them to understand uh, understand the things that are going on in the world. So, it's, uh, as well as understanding other people, it's about educating people about how things work, how the media works, and how that influences people's uh, thoughts and opinions of other people, and what the dangers uh, dangers of it is. Because we're think, seeing a lot of people posting things on social mm -hmm. media, which could be affecting their future chances. Because if if someone, for example, uh, post uh, post a racist message uh, or, or a homophobic message on on social media, and they they go for a job interview because a lot of lot of employers now tend to look at all of these things, uh, and, it's, and it's quite easy to access. So how does that affect their their future chances of getting that job or whatever it might be, or even even uh, boxing boxing for a for the national um, national um, on the na national competition and being on GB or England part of England, that will uh, undoubtedly affect their chances. So it's being being aware of uh, what what they what they're doing and how they're um, uh, conducting themselves because that's a big part of it. And as Mark mentioned uh, earlier, I think it was we were talking in the break. It was it's, it's about the uh, it's about coachability. And how how they're receptive to to what what England boxing want and GB boxing want, um, and that's not this is not one of the things that you know will be accepted by England of boxing course. or GB. Uh, and if they if they're posting these th things on on social media, it's going to affect them in the future. So that's what we're trying to educate uh, p people on, really. I mean, I'm glad to see a lot of young people getting involved. That's their important. It's their future. It's definitely. You know, we do make difference, but they are the future. Mark, you're part of the campaign. Yeah. Well. If you could break it down, mm -hmm. when you because you, I'm sure you planned it out, racism. Uh, if you yeah. could break it down, what's what's well, going on? Is there anything new? Yeah. Well, Harvey's mentioned it before about how life changes, and what we've seen over the past, not just me and Shah, but everyone, is people going towards the extremes, and that extremes, uh, the extreme right, and also extreme in terms of uh, some of the the sort. Of the more radical is Islam sort of sides. Now, mm -hmm. what we're trying to do with this is is try and pull those back okay. into the middle. 
where really that's where life exists, you know, as far as I'm concerned, as far as Shah's concerned. You know, that, 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 that in the middle is where you, you solve things. You don't solve things by coming in from two extreme views. That's what causes all the, all the sort of t the problems. And that's why we're using a boxing and boxing in as an example, because you're taking an extreme sport, but everyone's working together when it's working at its best. And people from, as we mentioned right at the beginning, who are from Bangladeshi backgrounds, Pakistani, from Irish traveller backgrounds, uh, and we're not in any way inventing this. This is this is true. So we're using boxing to say this is how it can work. You don't have to go out to those two extremes. Come back into the into the the, the, the middle, and that really is what the the campaign's about. And also, as Shah just said. Um, promoting uh, the, the multiculturalism of the sport and also the educating on on things that could give you problems in later life, i.e. What could the parents do? What, how do we get involved if people want to get involved with your campaign? Well, we're taking it into schools. Um, so the, it's only just begun. Today was the launch. Uh, we're putting together a, an education program uh, which will include uh, a short film. It will in include like um, bringing stars of the sport like Harvey in to, to answer questions, Darren, uh, ex-stars of the sport and various other people who can uh, give their experiences, put their experiences across first hand about how, what, what a wonderful sport it is and how many countries they've been to, how many people they've met and, um, and you know alongside that we've obviously got the physical side of it so it'll be part educational, part getting people involved in it as you saw today and uh, and yeah, I guess from that, hopefully, we not only draw more uh, uh, people in, into the sport, but also we're, we're kind of educating as we go. Dad, we talked about a lot of young people, mostly about men and young boys. How about our ladies? Are they involved with the boxing? Yeah, you know, uh, How do we when get I was more? well, when I was growing up, and, and probably when Mark and maybe even Shah even like. It was a bit of a, a taboo, really. Like female box, it wasn't a thing, really, and it, it was quite, quite a sexist thing in a way. Like I remember being in my gym in the late eighties and through the nineties and even the two thousands, where coaches would turn girls away just because they were girls. Where, you know, the world's not like that now. The whole the world. That's the beautiful thing about our world now. It's you know we've got different sexes, cultures around the world who we should embrace and engage with and, and get to know each other and, and experience those cultures and, and, and uh, equalities. So, you know, at the moment, like boxing and female wise, it's actually quite thriving, you know, they're turning professional as well. You've got Katie Taylor from Ireland who's leading, who's a leading light for female boxing and in this country you've got people like Nicola Adams as well who, you know, one Olympic champion and, and just recent term professional herself. So females within boxing, it's, it's still not as high as, as men or, uh, or males, I should say. And um, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's getting bigger and it's more highlighted and there's progression there. And it's, and it's getting bigger and better all the time. With your experience of traveling the world, if you want to do a project, what would it be? A new project, something new ideas? In terms of what, sorry? Like In boxing, boxing or? Yeah. What would you do different? Um, because Mark started writing uh, books now. I wish I could write So that. you know where he's going. <laughs> I might be able to draw pictures. But, <laughs> okay. um, no, really, you think there's something thing missing yourself? I think something it like Mark and Shah have started up and I'm trying to help out as well with the car race. I think it's a big thing, you know, in terms of educating people. And a lot of it is a lot of the older people that are maybe set in their ways and don't actually embrace or realise the equality of it all. Um, but maybe like Mark runs an NFQ project at a school and having that educational theme is a great theme because like I said there's hundreds of thousands of boxers in the world and there's not many of them that are millionaires that could live for life off the money they make so you might love boxing but it could be that you write about boxing, you could be a physiotherapist, you could be a coach like ourselves so that you can maybe earn an income through boxing or like Mark you could write a book. So if you've got a passion for something, and whether it's boxing, it might not necessarily be boxing yourself, it could be the avenues I've just mentioned. What do you see the future of the boxing in this country, you think? Uh, like I said, since sort of lottery funding's come in and we've, and we've had the money come in from the government, we've, we've grown from each, each Olympic cycle, from Sydney 2000 right to, to London 2012 and even Rio 2016. If you look at results-wise, We've gone from here to there, like I said before, we've, we've got bigger and better. We're now one of 
we used to be oh that little country England or Great Britain who the Russians or the Americans or the Cubans would love to draw in the first round because they think it was easy pickings where now we're the country where a lot of other countries look to avoid because we're a leading light and like I said you mentioned money earlier money does play a part you know you, uh, you've got really talented boxers now that don't have to turn professional because there's good money to stay amateur at the elite level you know at the lower level there's not but then that's maybe an incentive like Harvey said he had an incentive that he didn't want to go out on a loss he wanted to go out on a win so the incentive as an amateur uh, perspective is to maybe make a GB team or an England team and that way you get a bit of money and that could lead on to bigger and better things. Brilliant. Harvey everyone's talking about you man. <laughs> What's going on? What happened when you, when you go to school and uh, or people you know, do they come up to you and give you your uh, autograph and stuff like that? Oh, no, uh, I'm just not at that you. level I'm yet. Just I'm yet. not at that level yet, but um, hopefully in the future. But I mean, yeah, I was, I was boxing, I was winning national titles. Like I think was, uh, Shab, remember, I don't know if you call me, uh, when he actually won one of the medals, I think we come to your gym, isn't it? Yes. So we we li lined up to take a picture with you. <laughs> oh, I actually <laughs> had the picture. Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, um, it's always good to like go back to, because you, um, as when you get to the elite sort of level, um, you've always got to remember how you got there. Like, and we all come through the same route. The same. I started off as a young ten-year-old kid who just wanted to wanted to like take part, learn how to fight, learn how to fight, and um, ended up being able to have a life from boxing. And um, yeah, so everyone's going through the same. You have to go through the same. There's no shortcuts. Yeah, share us your dreams. What's your dreams? My How dreams. far are you and they go? Um, I, if I'm deadly honest, without sounding too cheesy, I'm sort of living my dream at the minute. I mean, I'm, I've travelled the world over the past three years, and been getting paid for it. Um, I've been to some. I've seen a lot of countries that you would never, never normally go to on holiday. I've been to the likes of Macedonia, Kazakhstan. I've been been to most continents um, just um, so that's so what a lot of people pay to do I'm getting paid to do and um, like I said all the, all my dreams now really are turn pro and win as many titles as I can hopefully get enough money in the bank to um, like continue uh, have a life afterwards you know a comfortable life afterwards but um, I always want to stay involved in boxing it's played such a big part in my life I've I would I'd want to be able to give back. I want to be like, I want to be able to like compensate. I want to be able to put on campaigns like, like Mark and Shaw, and um, I'd like to give back because um, it if all goes to plan, it already has given me a lot. Of boxing, it's, like Darren said, it's shaped the person I am today, shaped my personality. So um, I'd like to give back, and uh, if I do achieve what I believe I can achieve, then I'll be able to give back. So. Who's the most peop important person in your life that pushed you towards that and it made effort? Anyone you want to mention? Would be um, interesting for like I say, my family have been very supportive. I mean, um, my brothers have been that competitive, like that little competitive edge I needed. Um, that, or they've been, uh, where I'm the older one, I've always wanted to give them a positive role model to look towards. Um, but my dad, my dad's very passionate about boxing. Loves it. My mum just wants to see me do well in life. And he's very like passionate about that. Maybe doesn't like watching it, but wants me to go far. So um, they've been a big, big part in my life. And I think um, definitely the, a, a massive part of it as well has been my amateur gyms that I've been to. I've been to Gator Amateur Boxing Club, which is where I was for about five years. I've been to the Repton Boxing Club out of Bethnal Green. I've trained down at Limehouse. Um, I've done. I've been to these gyms and a lot of them are a lot of them are volunteers, a lot of coaches are volunteers, they're doing it out of their own. Tell me about Limehouse, I've been there a few times myself. Those young guys actually they look up to you because you've gone quite far. So what what's the advice for them? Um, my advice to them would be to stick at it. If you really wanna if you really wanna achieve um, if you wanna get the rewards out of it and it's the same with life, the same with boxing, you've gotta be hundred percent dedicated and you ha you have to want it. You have to want it, whether you want the extrinsic rules or you want to be the number one, or you just want to, you, you want to you want to be the best. You have to just keep at it, keep it through the hard time, and ignore ignore what your friends are doing. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of times to party after when you've made your millions. So you know, like he's, he's traveling the world, man, and getting paid as well. I know. You're traveling I, the world by you paying. No, I, I pay I pay for it. So. <laughs> 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 um, if you actually say, imagine you're starting boxing now, what would you do different than before? Because your your you, your journey has. I think um, get a different coach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. Um, 
No, not get a different coach. Maybe the, look for the opportunities. Um, I don't think where, where uh, I was, and that's one of the reasons Mark and I left our old clubs is because there's not, there weren't that many opportunities available as uh, what we are giving the young people that we're working with. You know, we're giving them uh, many opportunities which I, 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 I had missed out on um, because the club didn't provide that at the time. Uh, and so what I'd, what I'd say is, you know, find a find a good good club with uh, with good good coaching uh, structure, good coaches, and that can provide some opportunities. If you could break it down, your projects, I mean, it would be interesting for everyone. I mean, the the, the 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 boxing side of things is we we've, we've got Mark, uh, who's an England coach. We've got Darren, who's been a GB coach. Uh, so we've got that pretty much covered, you know. These guys ha come with a wealth of experience, and Harvey as well. Harvey comes in um, and helps out at the club, um, so we've got that si that side covered. Uh, we provide, we try and provide as many opportunities as we can. So we've got the kids going on to uh, going on to the England camps. We could take them to the Open Talent Days, where they get they get assessed for the England camps and GB camps and so on. So we're, we're doing all of these things. We take them to as many shows as we possibly can. Uh, you know, last year we had 50, well, 30 something. In 18 months we've had 53 50, bounce. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so you yeah. know, we, we're we're really really busy with with all of these things, and that's just about providing opportunities for for young people. So that's the boxing side of things. I think we've been pretty busy and busy, and we've covered we have that covered. Alongside that, we provide the the uh, the other sort of side of things, this, their sort of personal development and educational uh, attainment and so on. We we run the NVQ program that uh, Darren mentioned earlier. Um, we're doing other coaching courses where young people can uh, take part in and How become future. Uh, we we're, we're based at um, Spotlight Youth Centre, and they have a they have a website. Uh, if you Google "We Are Spotlight," it will it will come up. Um, our details are on, on there as well. Um, we have a Facebook page where you can go on, and uh, our contact num contact numbers are on, on there as well. Uh, so we can, if you, if you, if you, if anyone's interested, uh, if any young people or parents are interested in sending their sending their kids uh, to to the club, they can contact us directly, um, and then we can give them the information. Darren, you got um, 30 seconds to say adieu. As the last word. <laughs> Um, all I would say is um, we've all spoke about some amazing things. For me, the biggest thing in life is to enjoy whatever you do. And I know we keep saying it, but discipline and dedication will get you a long, long way in life, whether it's in sport or whether you want to be a doctor, uh, a bank, whatever it may be. If you're dedicated, you're committed, and you believe and have a passion for something, you'll get far in life. Brilliant. You have 50 seconds. Reiterate that. Enjoy it. Be open-minded. Be creative. Uh, don't don't close your mind off to things that you might you know come out of your comfort zone. Don't always do the obvious, you know. And uh, yeah, don't put and don't don't be afraid of anything. It's only a short life, so you might as well have a go. Brilliant. Thirty seconds for you, sir. Um, exactly what these guys have said. I think it's a, it's about um, having these experiences and not closing off closing yourself to things um, you know I, I, I come from a, I come from Bangladesh and uh, you know I'm running a boxing club with these guys which is a very different thing to do um, and uh, yeah not being afraid to, to do things di different to do things that other people aren't doing do what you're interested in do what you're passionate about as Darren said 20 seconds for you sir um, I would say um, don't limit yourself to like other people's Imagination is always like if um, just go go if you can believe it you can you can do it. So like I think Ali, Ali said, what was it the impossible is nothing? Yeah. So yeah, as long as as long as you can think it, you can believe it, you you, you can achieve it. So brilliant. Thank you for uh, everybody to come in today. And you made the special uh, events tonight. Especially a lot of people are watching from the Europe and the different part of the country. They're enjoying, I'm sure. Your brothers and sisters. We talked about boxing, but mostly we talked about discipline, we talked about passion, we talked about heroism, we talked about writing and disciplining yourself. I think this is very important for our lives. Boxing is just a tiny part of it. So when, I, when we hear about boxing, don't think about blood and punching and everything. A lot of things comes into it as well, and it's the lifestyle. And you, you never know, you might make a lot of money too. Why not? You could be one of those 20 who made millions of money. 
if we said anything wrong please do forgive us we just also learning from like you guys and please see you next week inshallah with the new ideas assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh